if you walk or drive in Montgomery County, you need to stay tuned to our next Connecting Our Community, coming up right away. Hi, I'm Pat Shoemaker. Welcome to Connecting Our Community. Our guest tonight is Captain David McBain of the Traffic Division of the Montgomery County Police. Welcome. And what we're here to discuss tonight is an absolutely terrible thing that's been happening in Montgomery County. The pedestrians who are being struck and killed, all of a sudden it seems like an epidemic. Is, is that the case? Is it happening more and more? Well, we've certainly seen um, uh, some pretty horrific uh, collisions. And, um, you know, right now we're, we've had four uh, pedestrians that have been killed. Uh, have lost their lives um, as a result of a, a collision in the county. And do you, can you trace it back to any one particular thing that's happening? Is it, is it something that they're, that pedestrians are doing or that drivers are doing? Well, any time that, um, that a, a collision occurs and there's a fatality, uh, it's a rather lengthy investigation. So as far as the collisions are concerned, I really can't comment on, on where we are in those investigations. We do have some preliminary um, uh, reasons of why we believe that the collisions occur uh, or, or happen, but um, uh, it's not until they're fully investigated uh, that we present these cases before the state's attorney's office of Montgomery County. Um, and it's at that time that we determine uh, if, if any charges are going to come out uh, whether, um, you know, or in fact, uh, if the pedestrian was at fault. And do you, do you think that it's because, I mean, when I walk around, when I drive, I see people face down doing this on their phones. Do you think that that contributes to it, either the pedestrians just walking out into traffic or the drivers being on their phones? Yeah, so, you know, typically when we, we talk about distracted, uh, we talk about distracted driving, but more and more, uh, obviously we're a very busy society, uh, fast moving, and we have over a million people in the county that traverse the roads and sidewalks and intersections every single day. Uh, and what we're finding is, is uh, that not only do we have distracted drivers, but we have distracted walkers. All, all these things play a role in safely navigating through the county every day. So what can be done? I mean, you can say to somebody who's walking next to you, don't cross the street right now, there's a car coming. Right. But more than likely, everybody walking is doing their phones or you right. know, either talking or whatever they're doing. So. Right, so um, so we try to we try to get out in front of these things and, and do things like this TV show, right? Mm -hmm. we, we try to educate the public about you know not necessarily just the laws, but you know just some common sense things that can kind of keep you alive and keep you safe. Um, and uh, uh, what we find is is that yes, we do do enforcement um, uh, on pedestrians. Uh, but what we find also, though, is that we can make kind of a bigger impact if we educate them. So what we try to do is to get the message out of things that they can do, um, you know, to be safer. And um, at the same time, we get the message out to drivers is put the phone down. Uh, what I always like to say is um, if, if you're doing something else besides watching the road, then you're distracted. Mm -hmm. And it's just not the phone. So... Yeah. And so how are you educating people? I mean, when you try to educate people, what is it that you tell people to do other than well, don't so, do that? <laughs> um, so Montgomery County's come up with a, um, uh, a brochure, a pamphlet that we hand out. Um, pamphlet's in Spanish and in English. Um, and it's just basic rules of, of the road as far as what pe pedestrians are required to do, what cars are required to do, who needs to yield, and, and, and when. Um, but uh, also, uh, we do uh, pedestrian enforcement, both on pedestrians and on cars, uh, all the time throughout the year. And this is, uh, these are operations where it's multiple officers involved, 
Um, and, and we just don't target one group of people. We try to, to address both the pedestrian and the vehicle. And so do you have like the, um, on New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, and, and different holidays, there are very often those sober checks mm -hmm. for people dr uh, drinking and driving. Do you do that same kind of thing with the distracted? Yeah, so um, uh, it's no secret because I've, I've talked uh, uh, about this a lot and been interviewed when we've actually been doing them, but uh, we actually um, have police officers pose as pedestrians, uh -huh. um, we typically put them in a very bright shirt, uh, and then we have um, the police officer acting as a pedestrian, walking across, in, you know, in intersections, legally entering the roadway and establishing themselves in the roadway. And when cars don't yield, we have right. officers down the road, and we we call out the car and we we issue uh, citations for that. Um, that's, a, that's a proactive way in how we address uh, crosswalk safety and, and violations of vehicles. Um, and then in the same respect, uh, when we typically in our downtown uh, central business districts, uh, we will work intersections um, and we're monitoring the lights uh, and the, the, the pedestrian lights. And when a pedestrian crosses against that light, we're stopping them and sighting them. Yeah. And so if a pedestrian is at an, a, a crosswalk mm -hmm. and the light or the, the little person yep. that shows um, turns to allow the pedestrian to walk, yes. maybe the pedestrian is still walking when that light changes. Uh, so. It, uh, typically, well, all the time, uh, if, you, if, if a pedestrian approaches a lighted intersection uh, controlled by a signal, um, the, uh, the, the typical walking yeah. person, person. Um, white light, uh, if, if that is there, uh, then the pedestrian has the right of way to go into the intersection. Now, they have the right of way, but what we try to tell pedestrians is still look. Yeah. Like pay attention to your surroundings and right. just don't assume that it's always going to be clear because people make mistakes every day. So we try to, con we try to encourage uh, pedestrians to catch the eye of the drivers. Make sure that the driver's coming to a stop and yielding to them walking. Um, but a pedestrian that enters the intersection, uh, there's a, a certain amount of time in which either the Department of Transportation or State Highway Administration has determined is, is a, um, a reasonable amount of time for them to get across that roadway. Um, and what happens is the, the light obviously starts blinking, the hand will come up, yeah. and it, that's an indicator that your time is running out, you need to scoot along and, and, and complete your move. Um, and sometimes you will see lights that have a countdown which makes it a little bit easier, mm -hmm. kind of gives you an idea how much more time exactly. that you have. And so are those timed lights, um, for example, some roads obviously are busier than other roads, mm -hmm. so is there a timing, is there somebody who goes out and says, okay, well this intersection we should have yes. 15 sec sec seconds yeah. to cross, or this intersection, yeah, you should be able to make it across in seven seconds. Yeah. Or so, um, the Montgomery County Department of Transportation and the State Highway Administration, depending on the roadway that we're talking about, a county or a state road, um, they have engineers that uh, when um, they, they're constantly evaluating traffic patterns and um, they um, basically have formulas for setting up lights to be successfully traversed by a pedestrian. And, and is there, and this may not be something that you could answer, but on a road that has a light, a light, a light, a light, mm -hmm. are those timed to allow pedestrians to cross with cars and the flow of the cars from light to light? Yeah. Are, are those things so all timed as well? Everything's on is timing oh, together. Good. And 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 it's it's a it's a great question, but what it leads into is also uh, sometimes uh, we receive um, s requests. I want a light here, or I want this, you know, and, and it's, it makes sense, right? But uh, I think State Highway Administration and Department of Transportation would tell you, it's not as easy as just going mm -hmm. and throwing that light in there. Right. There's timing sequences. 
um, uh, if you change um, the timing of a light at one intersection, it affects the rest of the roadway. So uh, that takes time. Uh, the state and the county are constantly um, looking at ways to improve uh, the, the, how the systems um, time each other and react, uh, but it's a, it, it takes time. Yeah, no pun intended that it takes time Correct. for the timing. That's right. <laughs> but do those things, do they ever get changed? Yes. So it may start out that there's a crosswalk with this much time to get across and then there's more development, more houses or something, and so they go back in and... Yeah, there's always uh, outside factors that go into that, and something else that the state uh, and the county, I know, keep um, uh, in mind and take very seriously is uh, we, have a, we have a disabled population, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a, an older population. Exactly, I was just going so to say So it's that. just not the, I don't know, 15 to 20, to, you know, it's just not the ones that... Right. Or Someone people out that for can, a job. That's right. So <laughs> uh, they, they keep those members of our society in mind yeah. when they're, they're coming up with these, these numbers. Yeah. And, and as a driver approaching these crosswalks, it's up to me to make sure that there isn't anybody in the crosswalk that's because right. they have the right of way no matter what the light is, correct? Well, no. If the, if the signal tells the pedestrian to stop, then the pedestrian must wait until the white man, the, yeah, the, the white light person. comes out, yeah. you know, the go. Um, and so the, the lights are designed that would allow free passage of the car through the intersection. So it's, that's why it's important for the pedestrian to pay attention because unfortunately, when a car and pedestrian hit each other, only one comes out yeah. really banged up, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, and that's what we try to tell pedestrians is, um, you know, just be aware of your surroundings. But Drivers too, though, and they, even though they have a green light, especially if you're in a congested area, um, slow down, stop driving to distracted, and just kind of pay attention to your surroundings. Yeah. And with that being said, it's time for us to take a short break. We will be back. There's a whole lot more to talk about, so please stay with us. Don't be distracted and turn away. Come back to us after the break. <laughs> I'm Alejandro Escobedo. Music has always been my life, but that was almost taken away from me by hepatitis C. Thankfully, I received treatment and stopped cancer before it started. Yes, cancer. Most people don't know there's a link between certain viruses and cancer. I didn't know, but I do now, and so should you. That's why I've partnered with the Prevent Cancer Foundation. The three most common viruses linked to cancer are human papilloma virus, or HPV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Every year, more than 27,000 men and women are diagnosed with a cancer caused by HPV, and up to 65% of all liver cancers are caused by Hep B or C. These cancers are preventable. Getting screened, vaccinated, and treated isn't scary, but cancer is. For more information, visit thinkaboutthelink.org. Together, we can stop cancer before it starts. Hi, welcome back to Connecting Our Community. We're speaking this evening with Captain David McBain of the Traffic Division for Montgomery County Police. Um, there's a new initiative that I've heard rumors about, but I don't know what it is. It's Vision Zero, Zero Vision? Vision Zero. Vision Zero. Yep. It's, uh, Vision Zero comes out of the county uh, executive's office. Uh, it was started uh, uh, a few years ago. Um, and um, you know, Vision, Vision Zero is an effort for Montgomery County uh, to um, try to reach zero fatalities by 2030. Wow. Uh, it's ambitious, um, and sometimes people, um, you know, think it's uh, um, maybe too, too ambitious saying zero, uh, but I think what people need to remember is as long as we're making efforts to go down in our numbers and not up, and yeah. uh, and I think that um, you know by you know putting in effect some of the things that we're we're doing for enforcement, education, and prevention, uh, engineering, uh, that we can reduce the number of fatals in the county. Yeah. And so, do you have a starting point? I mean, in 2019, was there a number, and you're trying to incrementally decrease it every year, or I mean, so, you can't obviously go from something to zero. 
Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, last year we had um, uh, 32 uh, fatal collisions in the county. Uh, and I think, uh, I believe that resulted in 33 deaths. Um, that was uh, slightly up from the year prior. Uh, so obviously not in the direction we wanted to go. So as we move through 2020, our goal is to make sure that we see numbers going down. And, um, and of course, um, down for pedestrians, down for motorcyclists, bicyclists, and you know, drivers of cars. Yeah, and are there different rules for um, motorcyclists, bicyclists, joggers? So, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, then we're done. Um, that's, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, no. So, um, one thing that um, I try to make sure that uh, the biking community realizes, and, and they're really good about this, generally speaking, uh, but when a bicyclist is in the roadway, that bicyclist must um, adhere to the traffic article, to the rules of the road. Uh, it's got to stop at stop signs. They have to stop at red lights. Um, they can't uh, impede traffic. Um, and so basically they have, to, they have to abide by the rules. They have to yield to pedestrians. Uh, really? So, huh. um, but, but yeah, so that's... That's something that uh, I always try to get across to bicyclists. Um, and then if a bicyclist is encountering a crosswalk, uh, they cannot ride into that crosswalk at a fast pace and assume it's theirs. They have to also establish themselves safely in that crosswalk. And if they're going to ride in the crosswalk, they too have to adhere to those lights. So if a, a bicyclist is going with the flow of cars yes. comes to a red light and mm -hmm. there's a crosswalk the bicyclist has to pretend to be a car the, and stop at the red light and stay there until it turns green that's the correct. same as a car would yes is that unique no to, oh uh, and that's, that's been the law for many many years mm -hmm. um, there's you know there was a time in Montgomery County I can't remember the year but bicyclists were not allowed to ride on sidewalks yeah. and now they can yeah uh, that was probably the uh, one of the biggest changes that that we've seen over the years yeah I don't know that all bicyclists know that they are supposed to stop mm -hmm. and not go until it's green that's why I'm again on your that's show. why you're here <laughs> exactly well there you've taught me something that's excellent. Yes. <laughs> We actually have a pretty decent uh, relationship with some of our biking communities, and those are some of the things we talk about, and we talk about some safety uh, concerns that they have about, you know, being provided three foot uh, or three feet um, uh, buffer from cars. And so, um, again, when we're talking about Vision Zero, uh, we're talking about cars and pedestrians and bikes sharing the roadway. Um, and it's, it's our job to try to make sure that they don't come in contact with each other. Right. And it, it's, it's a very hard job to yeah. deal with sometimes. Yeah. And it just hit me, vision zero, this is 2020. Oh, is that boy. how it came up? No, no. actually, oh. cause it's been around for, um, like I said, uh, oh, I thought uh, I was several so years now. You know, it's been in the works, and, and we, it's really um, uh, this, this 2020, uh, the um, I, I think the county's really shown how engaged or serious they are about this. Um, uh, there's a, a, a young man named uh, Wade Holland, uh, who uh, I, I work with quite a bit now. He is specifically responsible and he is overseeing Vision Zero for all of Montgomery County. So um, he's kind of the hub for the Department of Transportation and the Police Department, Fire Department. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's just a, a, a way that we don't miss information and we share information. Yeah. And that was what I was going to ask as well. So many hands are in this. Does everybody across the board share the information and have the same basic mindset? Yeah. Or is it sort of a tug of war? The Department of Transportation wants to do this, mark these things, count this way. Yeah. The police department wants to do this. No, um, and in fact, uh, you know, I, I, um, I actually became the director of, uh, of, of Montgomery County's traffic division um, in late December, and, and basically for this year, you know, beginning of the year. And um, 
We enjoy a really good working relationship with Montgomery County Department of Transportation and the State Highway Administration. Um, when I go out to, to some of these crash scenes, especially when there's a fatality, um, because I'm always out there first, um, I'm looking for engineering or environmental issues that maybe need to be corrected right away. Uh, or, um, you know, at least um, I, I, I make note of things that I then talk to my counterparts in transportation right. and con convey my concerns and uh, and then we work on a solution to try to always make it safer. Yeah. So as a citizen, if I am either in a car, being a pedestrian, riding my bike, whatever, and I see a crosswalk or a road mm -hmm. or something that I think is dangerous, mm -hmm. um, the count doesn't seem to be enough time to get across the street or just something that I'm concerned about concerning the roads, do I contact the police? Do I contact the Department of Transportation? What, what would be my action as a citizen? So a lot of times people get confused of whether they're on a state road or a county road. Clearly if we're in a neighborhood, it's usually a county, but um, sometimes people don't understand. Uh, it's very easy though, a state road is the white signs with the black lettering, 355, 27, 486. Um, but those are state roads. But even if you don't know that, uh, you can start by calling the Department of Transportation for Montgomery County. Uh, you can call the police department. Um, if once we're talking with the person, we identify it to be a state road, then we'll put them in contact yeah. with the right people. Yeah. And State Highway does the same with us. Yeah. Well, that's very good. So what would you say bottom line should be something that would help all of these agencies and the public and you know drivers pedestrians how would you counsel people what would you say well um, again I've said it a couple times but you know we are we're greater than a million people I mean it's it's and it's not going to get any smaller mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're we've become dense um, and uh, as a result um, we have a lot of moving parts and we can do all the enforcement that you could think of, uh, all the prevention, all the education, and if people don't heed the warnings, if they don't slow down a little bit and pay attention, uh, if they don't take a little bit of responsibility, not to be safe for themselves, but just in general as, as a whole, um, then it's gonna make our job harder and harder. Yeah, and, and so, for people who are not in a car, not on a bicycle, maybe jogging, mm -hmm. are there different things that, rules, regulations, well, so, things like that? Um, uh, something's very important for uh, pedestrians, joggers, you know. Um, so let's just talk about a few different scenarios. Um, uh, say a, a crosswalk where there's no light, uh, which Montgomery County has that. Well. What the pedestrian has to do, it, that means that there's a free flowing of, of, of vehicles, right? So that pedestrian then needs to establish themselves in the crosswalk. When it's safe to do so, when, by looking both ways, like we were taught very young, right. uh, and they, they establish themselves in the crosswalk and they traverse that roadway. And the whole time though, they need, they need to pay attention to what's going on around them to make sure they're seen. Um, sometimes we'll have joggers or bicyclists just assume that it's theirs mm -hmm. and that's just not the, tr the case. They have a responsibility to enter the crosswalk safely. Um, and same though, uh, when cars see a pedestrian, they need to stop. Now, this is what's dangerous and, and it's, uh, we, we try to make sure motorists know this. If you see a car stopped at a crosswalk, there's a reason for that mm -hmm. car stopped there. It's illegal for you to pass that car. Yeah. So if you're, say, on a dual lane road, two lanes, um, and a car is stopped at a crosswalk, you have a responsibility to stop next to that car because more than likely it's because a pedestrian's coming. And if you were to have struck that pedestrian, you would have been at fault. Yeah. It just, I think, boils down to common sense and courtesy. Yeah, slow yeah. down. 
slow down, pay yeah. attention. Yep. Don't be on your device. Nope. If you're out there, you're fair game and you don't want to be. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been so important. I hope that everybody learns yeah. something and takes a deep breath and slows down and drives more safely, walks more safely and rides bicycles more safely. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again for our next episode of Connecting Our Community. You can go to the Connecting Our Community blog on the mymcmedia.org website for more information. And again, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.